come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. You can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you, and we'll become the fastest growing internet sensation in the universe. We are. Hmm. These yeah. are the Internet Radio <laughs> Superstars. John. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Michaela, what do we watch tonight? We watched Ginger Snaps. Ooh. From the year... 2000. Ah, uh, starring... Catherine Isabel and uh, Emily Perkins. Mm, directed by... Uh, hold on. John Fawcett. Fawcett. Yes. <laughs> I, like, I had to, think for a second. I had to write it down because I was like, I don't know who this dude is. Yeah, do we know him from anything? Canadian television. Ooh, there you go. Orphan Canadian Black. Oh, so you know how, like in 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 England, everybody works at like the BBC has the same twenty people. Sure. Mm-hmm. In Canada, the the CBC has the same twenty people okay. that work on all their TV shows and movies. Like, uh, so John Fawcett, the director, wrote and directed on Orphan Black, and then the screenwriter for this movie also wrote on Orphan Black. So like Naturally. they just it's yeah. the same twenty people producing all the content in Canada. It seems like okay. he didn't create the show, right? He no, just, he oh, was, okay. but he directed like. 10 or 12 episodes so they must have liked him kept him around for like a season i guess yep. so oh, okay yeah well it's good to hear that he's still working mm-hmm. out there maybe not in features anymore but uh, i suppose that's kind of hard to do how did you hear about this movie um well you know i've always been into like werewolf movies and this always comes up on the lists of like you got to see this one this is one of the good ones you know and yeah. like because every, everyone knows the howling, everyone knows an American mm-hmm. Werewolf in London, and mm-hmm. like once you pass those, it kind of <laughs> what people know drops off steeply, you know. <laughs> um, and this one is interesting because I feel like this is the werewolf answer to the craft, right? Basically, yeah, you yeah, know, I'll go with that. Yeah. So, like, if you like the craft, here, here's Great the, what you feature. follow it up with. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know? oh, so we just so, need, all right. So we got we got witches, we got werewolves. We need what's the vampire equivalent? We need to figure this all out now. I was going to say maybe that'd be Twilight, right but it maybe Twilight. Not. I was yeah. like, it's not Twilight. Oh, yeah. It's not Twilight. Oh. That's a different. That's a different feel. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably that Vampire Academy movie. Or that was based and, on that YA book. Was it Blood and oh. Chocolate, or whatever those uh, mm-hmm. Agnes Bruckner was that Agnes Bruckner in that? Don't know. Yeah. Oh. What was is it? Uh, Immortal Instruments was that a vampire thing? No. no. Which one am I thinking of? That's, Mortal that's, Instruments. That's but... town. Is that the one of those yeah, big so towns that eat little oh. towns? No, that's... no, no, no. Uh, that's Mortal Engines. Yes, yeah. that's Mortal Engines. What the yeah. fuck is up with these titles? Mortal Instruments. Oh, okay, now I remember. Immor- isn't it Immortal Instruments? Yeah, that's, City that's of a, Bones or whatever. Yeah, I don't think yeah. they're that's vampires. Though. They're vampires, yeah. isn't it? I know. I think that's like a dystopian future thing. Okay, which is the one? It's got uh, Jonathan Rhys Myers, isn't it? Yeah. And, no. That's it. That's vampires, isn't it? Is it? Is it vampires? I think it is. I, I saw it. I saw a part of that, and they were okay. All right. I swear to God, it's vampires. Maybe. Am I making that up? I don't know. I don't. Know. I've never actually seen it. I don't you know. You do I make up know. things on this show, Holly. I do. You've been known to. I have been. See, I don't right. think I'm making that you up. Know, though. Return of the Living episode. All YA stuff. <laughs> I don't remember together. that at all. <laughs> <laughs> made up a lot of shit. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, how did you hear this movie? Uh, how did it come into your... I'm curious because this has like a, uh, you know, it was a, a delayed uh, exposure movie. Yeah. So that's why mm-hmm. I'm kind of trying to figure out how it first came on your radar. Uh, There's a solid chance I heard about it here. Oh, okay. <laughs> a solid chance. I'm sure we've name checked it. Yeah, I don't, re- I don't remember. Um, I think mine was... Uh, and I'm, I think I figure out my origin story here. I saw Ginger Snaps back first. Oh, oh. Of course you did. <laughs> so, of course you did. On TV somewhere. I'm yeah. pretty sure I'm just like, oh. The third one the is the one you saw. The, yeah. The, yeah. In the olden days. Yeah. I'm just like, okay. And then I'm sure I saw this at some point after that. So I'm always going backwards. Yeah. It had a, because uh, this was a, a troubled production, if I remember. Um, was Trouble there... in Canada? Yeah. yeah, well, because of the financing... Their version of Trouble, Colin. Like, yeah, like, well, well, they couldn't like get the... Craft Services was 30 minutes late. That's, yeah. you know, that's <laughs> yeah. Trouble. Well, I heard they, the were, they were trying... They had problems actually casting the movie because uh, the subject matter does involve, like, high school teenagers yeah. and there's this whole the kind of, like, suicide death... Well, and the, the casting notice went around, like, right after Columbine, so yeah. a bunch of people got real upset about that saying it was inappropriate to make this movie like and it was insensitive yeah 
because I guess it made like front page news mm-hmm. uh, in the Toronto Star or whatever. <laughs> we they, don't you know, know what that means. Yeah, but the idea that it's like your tax money is going to fund this kind of, you right. know, horrible yeah. entertainment. And yeah, so they were happens. able to get the movie made, but then uh, they were trying to get distributorship and it fell through with Fox Searchlight mm-hmm. and then it was picked up by like Lionsgate here in the States but then Lionsgate like it never came out in theaters no. like it feels like mm-hmm. a theater movie right mm-hmm. but it was never released here in the United States it came out on a DVD and a pan and scan version oh. it played at the Toronto Film Festival which it was really you know uh, received very well and they thought they had a hit on their hands and then it just kind of poof, you know, it went to film festivals. So I think that's how I heard about it was mm-hmm. through like probably back then, ain't it cool news or whatever. Joblo.com, yeah. Joblo.com, yeah. Joblo.com yeah. talking about this movie, Ginger Snaps. But I guess it was Elvis Mitchell who, you know, I'm sitting there going like, is Elvis Mitchell like the last like movie critic in the New York Times? Maybe. Uh, he <laughs> wrote up a, like it played at a repertory theater in New York and he saw it and wrote like a front page, you know, of the entertainment section thing about like, this is an important horror movie. And based on that, HBO bought it and then HBO played the living shit out of it. So most uh-huh. of you out there probably saw this movie on HBO yeah. throughout uh-huh. the 2000s. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So now it's kind of like in the lexicon of, of werewolf movies. Because you have, like, this thing. This is what I always have. Like, I like the story of the person who gets bitten by the wolf, and then there's that whole thing of, like, they're becoming... Those the dead. tragedy of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah mm-hmm. But this. it seems like once you do that story, there's not a whole lot of wiggle room, right? Correct. <laughs> it's Correct. like there's movies that have mapped that out, like The Wolfman... Mm-hmm. The Howling and or mm-hmm. American Werewolf in London. Yep. And then where do you go from there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So they found a way in uh, for Ginger Snaps, right? This is a different take on the werewolf mythology. Puberty. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. that had been done before with like Teen Wolf. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. In a comedic tone. Right. Yeah. Very, that movie. Really go back and watch them and think about this exists as a movie. Yeah, I don't think I've watched that with adult my adult yeah, brain. Yeah. So I'm probably sh- if I went back yeah. and watched it, like, whoa. Yeah, exactly. It, I fucking this love Teen Wolf. Yeah. I love Teen Wolf. Perspective it changes yeah. that movie dramatically. Oh yeah. Yeah. The um I mean I guess they're dealing with the same kind of things, except this is like the female version of uh of Teen Wolf. Yeah, like that, that's selling it. Colin, short. we have that it's called Teen Witch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's literally what that movie was. Yeah, it was like, really? let's make Teen Wolf for girls, and they made Teen Witch. And what year was that? Stay tuned. We'll that. watch it saying, eventually. Oh my God. It's like, what? Colin 80, will die. 80, 80, I want to say maybe. It, um, a Lively Sister is it? Not Blake Lively. Robin Lively? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Lively yeah. Vampire yeah. Records. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She, is, uh, she is the Teen Witch. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I don't even remember hearing about <laughs> that one, but okay. Yeah. Because she was, wasn't she in uh, The Craft? No, that's Robin no, Tunney. That's Robin, Robin Tunney. Tunney. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So, I mean, it is like there's there's other uh, women werewolves in movies, obviously, going back to like, I think, like the 40s, right? Going back all the way to Cursed. Of, uh, yeah. 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 Yep, yeah. Yep, Company yep, of Wolves. That's pretty infamous mm-hmm. for it. Yep. Uh, there's a bunch of them. But there was She-Wolf of London, obviously, like way back in the day. But like this she one looks London. specifically <laughs> at grafting uh, puberty onto from a, a girl's perspective onto the werewolf mm-hmm. myth and mm-hmm. like it blends together so well that you're really like how does. come nobody thought of this before <laughs> it's so it's so obvious that it's yeah. shocking no one thought of this i think before. maybe people even, were just like oh it's too spot on yeah maybe you know maybe it's too on the nose because even the moon cycles like that right there <laughs> yeah. you make yeah. that connection it's like right. okay well the movie's half written already Somebody, you yeah, know? when she was written this she was like this is perfect. Like yeah. when everything started connecting. It's all here. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, the guy uh, John Fawcett. I guess had done a movie called Half Nelson, which was like uh, with Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling? No, yeah, no, no, no. Was, like, some, I thought that I, I went through the same IMDb question. <laughs> what? Not that Half Nelson. Oh no, not that one. Isn't it a like a vampire thing? There was no cover image on IMDb, so I have no idea. Well, actually, <laughs> so I the I subject matter of this would make sense if he did that movie. Yeah, yeah. honestly, it would. Yeah. And then he can bring them together and create his own extended universe, right? Do a yeah. crossover movie. Yikes. Yeah. I think that's a kid finds out that his dad's a vampire, and then it's like, am I hereditarily like affected by this hmm. uh, you know, curse? Why is it called Half Nelson? I don't know. <laughs> is Half <laughs> Nelson half his, vampire? Is, is his name uh, Nelson and he's half, so. hum, half human, <laughs> half vampire? Yeah, this is the only way I, I assume. I still hate it. I got it. Oh, I hate everything about it. Oh, boy. Okay. Wait, what's his... 
Never mind. That's a yeah. whole other discussion. Yeah. I was I was thinking, I was like, that's like the Disney Channel movie Mom's got a date with a vampire. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't yeah, because yeah, I remember, oh and my best friend's a vampire. That was the other one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what's his name from which one's the one with the guy Jonathan Lipnicki? No the little kid. Oh, I'm in it. that. That vampire one? <laughs> what's his name? Uh moving on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> don't want to hold it up. All right. So, um, so obviously, this also incorporates some body horror because it's Canadian, and I mean, yeah, it's, just it's because it's Canadian. no, it's illegal to not make your horror body horror up there, right? I think it's against so. The law. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think when they sign the form, it's like you. There's must, certain you know, guidelines they have oh, to yeah, follow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's called Guaranteed. the Cronenberg clause, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, who's the? I mean, when you think about like you know Canadian filmmakers, I mean, you know, I mean, they shoot everything up there, but mm-hmm. uh, I mean, David Cronenberg's got to be at like the you know there's yep. Cronenberg and then any, everybody else I'm sorry for everybody else. yeah sorry, everybody I, I was gonna say that. Colin I don't know who those other people are he's yeah. the only one I can tell you but it's Cronenberg yeah. <laughs> um okay so we got uh um Catherine Isabel mm-hmm. um where do we know her from she's American Mary yeah when uh, <laughs> you guys know American Mary I'm seeing blank stares it's no, no. it's um <laughs> It, it's the Soska sisters. It's one of their. Uh, it's probably, in my opinion, a really good movie. Um, th- it's kind of like what if there was a female Patrick Bateman? Okay, uh, right. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So. She's like a surgeon mm-hmm. who's kicked out of medical school, mm-hmm. but is taken in by like un- the underground. You know, she can perform these surgeries, yeah. and all these people want. And she to. has like a Dexter kill outfit. It's oh. pretty, pretty yeah. cool. It's, it's a pretty good, it's good movie. movie. You yeah, check it's, that one out. Yeah. <clears throat> The Soska sisters, I think, also worked with uh, Catherine Isabel when they went uh, Hollywood and they were given the opportunity to do See No Evil 2, which I'm sure all of you have seen. Yeah. Uh, That's right. The wrestler Kane was in Sorry. But we would also know Catherine Isabel from Freddy vs. Jason. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, uh, I have a particular affinity for her from Hannibal. Yeah, she's yeah. been in a lot she's of genre stuff. Yep. and Insomnia. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, the Christopher Nolan one remake. Of the, mm-hmm. one, one of the best Christopher Nolan movies that never makes a list. I know. Yeah, yeah people probably because it's a remake. People always forget sure. about that movie. Mm-hmm. Always go back and watch Insomnia. Maybe we'll watch it sometime. I, say, soon. I haven't watched it in a while. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good. perfect wintertime movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. yeah. So is she still working? Do you know? I mean, I assume that. Uh, yeah, I see her on the convention circuit twice a year, usually. Yeah. <laughs> so she yeah, up on TV and stuff. And mm-hmm. She yeah, she was working pretty pretty steadily. Like I, when I was scrolling through her IMDb, it was a lot more stuff. I was like, oh, she was in that. Good for her. Like she was in like ten episodes of Supernatural or something. Like she's mm. popping yeah, up and stuff. I thought I saw her on something recently, but not. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, I, I feel think. like I saw a headline with her name in it recently. Yeah, mm-hmm. so she's still out there. I know mm-hmm. that in 2020, I think she uh, had said something on her Instagram that in 20, 2003, which went in shortly after this movie uh, was released, she like almost died of some kind of infectious disease, was in a coma, had to be ventilated, Jesus. survived, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. and just, you know, said about it uh, in, in 2020, but... Yeah, so she pulled through. That's crazy. <laughs> and wow. Continued her, her movie career. Um, she was also in, uh, because uh, back in the late 90s, uh, the X Files shot, well, everything shot in, in Vancouver. So she was in an episode of the X Files along with, well, not in the same episode, but her co star was also, I mean, you're Canadian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're, you're Canadian actor. You're same 20 people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they got 20 people. <laughs> so who's her co star? Uh, Emily Perkins. I can never remember this girl's name for some reason. I've seen right. her in so many things, and I can never. Yeah, remember I keep her wanting name. to say Elizabeth Perkins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it There's... turns out Emily Perkins may. Well, I don't know if she's more famous than she's in something that you would recognize as like, wow, she was in that. I don't remember her being in that. Yeah, which is weird because she has a very distinct face, so you think you'd remember, her, but it. Yeah. Jesus, I forget that. That's what I forget. Something like, we covered on this familiar. show. Okay. Yeah, wow, something we covered on the show and we I forgot. Saying, I just Jesus. found on him, like, uh, obviously. Okay. Yeah, yeah she was Beverly Marsh. They dyed her hair. She was a little girl. That's you know, right. Obviously, they dyed her hair. Right. And- we were talking about she's in Juno. Yeah, she's a very memorable scene in Juno. Mm-hmm. She's the um at the, the she's she's the receptionist at the Planned Parenthood clinic. Yep, and she says talks the, about the condoms. She talks about the condoms. Boysenberry. Boysenberry makes her boyfriend's well, junk no, smell I like see, pie. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember the scene. I just can't see yeah. her in it. Yeah. She looks like that, but with like bluish hair. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, she's like the goth girl. She's got like a tongue goth girl. black lipstick or whatever. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys were commenting about her hair in this movie. Oh God, that fucking wig! It's not her hair, Colin. It's a wig. No, it's a wig. There you go. It is a wig. Why? Why? Why is it so bad? Well, the how, way wait, is this how 
Like what was what, what was so wrong with Mal- malignant had a reason for what it? What okay. was so wrong with her actual hair? Why is she wearing a wig? Apparently, after getting the part, after you know they had all agreed, like she's the girl for the job. <clears throat> She cut her hair like drastically short. Okay. And John Fawcett was like, you know, we're designing this to be like a goth girl, you know, right. look. And he's like, I guess, you know, it's either you let her go or you keep the actress who's the best for the part and you go with a wig. So you so can't have a goth the, girl with short hair. There's lots not, of them. Not for I, I'm guessing well, not for the look uh, for this yeah. movie. If but at least get a like you can get a better wig. I Come think on. they Are wanted you in more like in Canada. I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, this movie had a four point five million dollar budget, so it's not like this was cheap, you know. True, yeah. but yeah, I agree. Like the the part and the seam on her it's forehead so looks so unnatural. It's, it's just so bad. doesn't move. And you know, yeah. well, let's put it this way: even when you have a lot of money, you're not getting away with it because Thor's hair in in Avengers movies, yeah, is, it's still is also rough. just like it's doing the same thing. It's got this one thing up here that never moves, and it's poofy in parts where your head yeah. isn't so, poofy. You know, wig, like give me a bad wig, no matter how much money you got put into it. Yeah. So I, I get like because in movie language, like if you have a dramatically short haircut, that's usually because you went through a character arc and needed to change right. your hair. Yeah, so like yeah. I get why they're like the audiences are going to think that's shorthand or a way for her to set herself apart from her sister when they're so weirdly codependent. They're like right. one person. Right. So like they need it's, to match visually. It's too and it's too much of an independent choice for her character. Exactly. I got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go with that. Well, tell me about. You're welcome, characters. studio, for all that light work I did for you there. That's good work. We'll give you a pass. Yeah. <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about this codependent relationship. Who do we have here? Who are the Fitzgerald sisters? Ginger and Bridget, which is really hard to say those two names back to back like that. Bridget. Yeah, Ginger it's, Bridget. it's yeah. like a vocal warm up. <laughs> um, they are like obsessed with morbid stuff and like staging death photos and crime scenes, and they are. Code is class project. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. so codependent. That they, it's that they never, they never explain what this class project is. No, no, we I don't need know what some it is. context it's art, for Holly. it. That's it. No, that is not an art. That class. was like a history class. I was or like, something. yeah, that was yeah. like English or something. Yeah. I need some context for this project. Uh, yep, I'm not gonna get it. Yeah. I know I'm not gonna get it, and that's Sorry. very disappointing. Yeah, the movie opens with a bunch of grisly uh, photo, like crime scene photos of them dead in uh, a bunch of different scenarios. There, yeah. I like. <laughs> I like to imagine the one with the fence post is they're t- recreating Hand the Rocks the Cradle. So that's that's yeah. what I was oh, like. Yeah. I was like, oh, I was like, is this like Canadian television referencing like other ca- Canadian? That was a Canadian movie, wasn't it? I don't know. It was felt I'm, Canadian? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if nothing else, it's honorary Canadian. You sure, know what? Yeah. <laughs> Basically everything shot there anyway. It, so right. it looks assuming, Canadian. Yeah. Right. I mean, Lifetime movies are like kind of what Canadian movies are like a lot of the I time, mean, you know? If it, I mean, God you know? bless them. Yeah. Let's, let's you put know? it this way. It looks so much like Hand the Rocks the Cradle. It had to be a Canadian production. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Had to. laughs> did you guys know that Canada, like they knock off our TV shows a lot? Did, did you, oh, yeah, like, yeah. 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 For did sure. you know that they have their version of the OC called Whistler? Ooh. I did not know that. <laughs> I'll watch it. Do they have a, a Canadian Breaking Bad? Probably. I know they have. I've seen the other countries that have, and I'd love to see it. Whistler takes place in Whistler, BC, and that's like their like skiing vacation destination. So they went ski chalet with it. Uh, I mean, I like it. It's but like you know they make it so easy to make fun of them. Jesus Christ! Like you know all all the jokes about Canada are true. It seems like they just kind of keep proving our sense of humor right about them. Everything's about hockey, skiing, maple syrup. Sorry, Tim Hortons. Yeah, That's Canada, I, right? I will be using the accent. <laughs> yeah. I'm very sorry, but I'm American. What can you do? But well. we love our Canadian <laughs> listeners. <laughs> oh, very much. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> they're practically giving themselves a wedgie at this point. You know, it's like, guys, quit making it so easy on us. <laughs> Well, the uh, the sisters have a bond, like you said, that uh, it runs very deep, and they have a suicide pact. Basically, at the beginning of the movie, they're like they're going to be dead at sixteen years old because they'd rather not be adults. I think they see adulthood as like a selling out somehow of uh, you know their. They need to maintain their independence at all costs. Yeah, yeah, and um, I guess. Then yeah. that's going to be what the movie is, right? The movie's going to fracture that relationship and strain it as far as it'll go over the next uh, 90 <laughs> minutes or so. Yeah. So how does it accomplish this? Sean. 
They went too close to the moors. <laughs> <laughs> which, which basically, they did. I mean, uh, oh, first of all, there's like, there's animal attacks. Happening. Dog yes. murder. Dog murder. Of, all over. How Lots many of dog dogs? Murders. Like what? Four or five? Right? There's several yeah. dog like murders. Yeah. There's close-up graphic dog disembowelment after effects. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's yeah. like right off the bat too. We see a little kid playing in a sandbox and then he like turns around and there's this dead dog like mutilated. Well, he finds the yard. dog foot in the yeah. sandbox <laughs> first. <laughs> it's too. messed up, yeah. man. Because we're told there's the beast of Bailey Downs, right? It's been killing the local uh, pets. Yes. <laughs> and so of course Ginger and uh, and Bridget go out at one, well, they're, because of the they're the misfits at school, right? Yeah. So there's, you know, the, uh, the jock character's you kind of have it in for them, and so they're going to get revenge for a, a uh, uh, well, I guess it is, it's a field hockey attack. Because yeah. oh, it's Canada. <laughs> in case you forgot, Colin, hockey. Hockey. We're really into it. Yeah. All yeah. types. Any version of it. Yeah. Take it. That's right. There's a kid at one point is wearing uh, hockey jerseys and all that, you know, just to go out and feed the dog. Walking around. He's wearing ice skates to walk around in his yard. Yeah, they make it so easy that's, to make fun of them. It's national pride. <laughs> uh, anyway, they're attacked uh, one night by a big giant beast, the ba- the beast of Bailey Downs, mm-hmm. yeah. like the hounds of Baskerville. Yeah, only we actually see this one. We yeah. don't just hear it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this also ties into the fact that uh, Ginger has just got her period for the first time. And so they're both late, like super like, late, super the, late. Because yeah. like what, Ginger's like 16, 17? 16. Yeah. 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 Like at that point, late. you need to go to the doctor because there's probably something wrong. That's a problem. Yeah. 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 That's very late. It's very late. It's interesting, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, aside from that, but the actresses were actually swapped in ages. Uh, Catherine and Isabel is like four years younger than Bridget. I don't remember. Mm. You know how old they were when they I made do the not. Move? They were in their 20s or whatever? They gotta be. Mm-hmm. Or maybe Catherine Isabel might have been like 18 or something. And, I think yeah. Catherine Isabel just turned 40 this year. So she was 19. Oh, okay. This. okay. So. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so so this is the, the idea being that, you know, she has her period. So the wolf is, uh, you know, comes a calling and uh, there's an attack. Literally, in a, figuratively. <laughs> right. I mean, or, because you know, this is this is one of those movies where like wolf, I mean. <laughs> the theme is uh, we call it lots of things. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> There's the scene. Does it feel like an American werewolf in London? This scene. It, it feels like a nod. Yeah. At best. Because it I'll does say? come out of nowhere. Yeah. Like there's no yeah. like ramp up to thinking this is going to happen right now. You know? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask you what you think about this werewolf. Should we leave that until the climax or just go at it right now? <laughs> I mean, we know everyone knows it's a werewolf movie. We can it's talk about it. It's very true. It's a werewolf yeah. movie. And I assume it's, a, it's the same puppet that's used in both the beginning and the end. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But we, don't oh, yeah. Get a, we don't get a full glimpse of it until the very end. Yeah. We just get... know that it's naked. It's a naked werewolf movie. Yeah. It's a furless werewolf. Yes. Both of them. I, How do we yeah. feel about it? furless werewolves they can cross into like marsupial looking territory real quick yeah. this like one has enough hair bear. yeah they're ho- or or <laughs> raccoon <laughs> even. yeah that's a if yeah. you haven't google that yeah. shit, that's some <laughs> <ever> <laughs> shaved bear Dude, animals look completely different without their fur it's yeah. terrifying i only say that because it looks like this thing yeah. yeah yeah i mean but is that what they're going for they just wanted to be I mean, there's I assume, enough hair on this, I think, and yeah. it's like because it's got like the kind of longer, wiry hair, like did it? A li- like not covering it, but kind of loose, like how it was on her shoulder. It was like that oh, wow. on her so back and her chest. My, I, it's like this yeah, very thin. Yeah, oh, it's like chest hair, hair, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't even remember seeing. It looks it. like yeah. a naked cat. It, I don't yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah, I need. It's I very need, rubbery and oily. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the problem. If you yeah. don't do hair on your prosthetic, you dry it. Looks, it looks like. Rubber. It yeah. Look, yeah, it looks like a rubber. Yeah. yeah. You know, it looks, uh, I mean, it looks like they took the... I mean, it kind of looks like the thing. It looks mm-hmm. like they took the... At the end of the movie where it rises up and screams at them. It looks like they took that thing, put a body on it, mm-hmm. and there's your werewolf. And then... And then this world has boobs, too. It does have boobs. True. Yeah. Which I, I mean, like, I appreciate the design yeah. choice. Not this one at this point in the movie, but later on when there's a werewolf with full. boobs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We never find out who this first uh, werewolf is. The Which I like. I respect yeah, that. Right. As you yeah. should. Just fuck it. There's a werewolf out there. And I, yeah. bit. I feel like some werewolf movies feel like they have to explain every step of the journey. That's so because, I'm glad that this one didn't. Well, you know? I think that's because they always end up on a journey like, we need to kill the head werewolf and then we'll all be safe. Yeah. Like, I think that's why. Or there's a second one. My favorite twist. There's a second one. Yeah. 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 
Oh, I was the first time I watched this movie. I was really worried the ending was gonna like fake out with a second one. <laughs> yeah, well they kind of, but they you're like don't see, ruin this. But they did kind of go with the whole. There's a second one because at some point the 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 bug a werewolf bug has been passed on right, to another yeah. character. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh no, we're gonna we're gonna go there. And I'm like, your kid, huh? <laughs> well, the gut, yeah. Oh, yeah, the gusher. Yes, kid. but we're talking about the very end too. Oh yeah, yeah, well, yes, there yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But they they don't they don't do it. They use it actually as a plot point, which I kind of like. It's like, well, he's going to be then the test subject to see if the cure works. Yeah, right. You know. Right. Um. So anyway, uh, there Ginger is bitten, and then of course, as werewolf movies do, she begins to uh, recover Transform. way too fast. Um. Why is it always a shoulder injury? I don't know. How come they can never go cool. for the, like the, the You head. want to get a lot yeah, of, a lot of the claws throat? and everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. the throat? You can display the work more, I think, if you yeah. get a nice shoulder wound. I would say right it's, it's just easier. It's more practical. Like, they can go about their daily life without having to explain a gash in their neck. You know? Oh, like, but no. That would have been the greatest opportunity to, to cross this teen angst stream with the werewolf thing. She comes down wearing a turtleneck and her mom gives her shit about having a hickey and it's really a big werewolf gash. Sure. Why was this scene <laughs> not in the movie? <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. I, yeah. I dig that. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> come on, it's right there. Right, All just right. keep tell, steering right into that. Yeah. Tell me about the teen angst in this movie. It's it makes the it's girls so in the craft it look is, cheery. It Holy is shit. dialed to eleven. Nineties angst. <laughs> yeah, it's spilled over. We are yeah. in the year two thousand, so it is that. It, it's very nineties. Mm-hmm. It's the that 90s. transition period. It's very. It's, it's there's baggy clothes and there's just where everyone's looking down. We survived the millennium and we didn't think we were going yeah. to. Right. God damn it! Right. And some of them apparently <laughs> hope they wouldn't. Yeah. It's like oh fuck, I'm still here. <laughs> You're saying that it's the eighties stank and the what? The nineties ooze. We've called 80s it eighties stank which, and nineties ooze. <laughs> which I yes, I think that's it. So what's the, what's back, the 2000s? We'll get there. I mean, All right. We food. It's going to come naturally. We we're still, so, like we're still nose blind to it right okay. now. You yeah, know, we got to wait till we can smell I it again. So. Okay. I, I feel confident calling it the 90s ooze. Yeah, it's no, that's a, solid. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of angsty teenagers in this. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the, the Fitzgerald sisters kind of lead the charge here. But a, you know, a transformation begins to happen within Ginger because, you know, there's a scene in this movie where uh, uh, she comes into school um you know, like, I guess as the the transfer, the idea being that, and, you know, they borrow this from, you know, like the Lost Boys or Wolf or whatever, that it may not be a horrible thing initially mm. having this kind of newfound uh, co- the, the confidence of the animal, you know? It's the monkey's paw thing, right? Like, oh, I'm hotter now. I get the attention I want. Like, people enjoy being around me. It's, oh, but I'm going to turn into a horrible monster. You it's know? very Jennifer's body. Okay, well, the, Jennifer's body owes a major debt to this movie, right? Jennifer's body does yeah. that scene. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Jennifer's body basically took this movie and just changed it to being a demon and added Diablo yeah, Cody dialogue. Yeah, I mean, they're, much, they're yeah. very similar. <laughs> the relationship movie. between the girls is the exact same. Yeah. Extremely codependent. Wait, is that why she's cast in Juno? Because Diablo oh, Cody's probably. A big fan. Uh, oh, definitely. Absolutely. Diablo Cody loves this yeah. movie. Right? <laughs> yes. Yes. yes you're, you're it's all right. coming yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've got sense. your number, Diablo Cody. Yeah. Got you figured out. We see you. We'll connect Tully to this somehow. <laughs> we see you. We like it, but we see you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. She's on notice. Uh, so, this, of course, you know, uh, Ginger has like a newfound sense of confidence. She's uh, a newfound, I mean, she's dressing different and all this other stuff. This is horrifying. Um, uh, Bridget, I'm going to keep forgetting her name. I don't know why. Because oh, they, well, cause they, they say B, B the yeah, whole B, time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Bridget's horrified because, you know, it's like basically we were supposed to go through uh, this experience together. And now, but that's what you can't really read. Is it like, uh, is it Ginger is basically sexually maturing mm-hmm. or is it the influence of the werewolf blood? Yes. In her. Both. Yes. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yes. Again, we're, that is, yeah, yeah. That they is have the, nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your metaphor and the actual thing is like yeah. so close together that they got it. Um, so she starts to draw the attention of uh, the boys around the classroom mm-hmm. and uh, she has a sexual encounter with one of them. And so this is now where we're also going to talk about like potential STDs, mm-hmm. right? Yes. That's yeah. the other part of this. What do we, we got coming of age, STDs, drugs, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All the bases. Yeah. 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 Uh, what you, you there was also the because uh, they lean into the humor of the situation too. There's a scene I think where Ginger gets her period and she has to go to the um, 
Yeah, the school, school nurse. nurse. Yeah, yeah. school nurse is delightful. <laughs> oh, have a seat now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're talking to Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. Yeah, she's a very cheerful woman. Uh, and gives out good advice. I like she's she very actually is helpful. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. The, I mean, that's the kind of person you need to. They yeah. just don't care. They're just like, well, be safe. Here's some comments. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just an unflappable, like, person yeah. that's just going to help you through your problem and like, take you on your yeah, way. She didn't just like hand her a tampon or her maxi pad and send her on her way. She's yeah, like, no, exactly. this is exactly what's happening to your body. Yeah. Here's a chart I'm going to show you mm-hmm. and I'm going to give you some condoms. Be safe. Like mm-hmm. she was very informative. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Very Does cheerful. Drive you nuts in movies when characters have a line of dialogue that goes something like this. You had sex. Did you use something? And I'm like, mm-hmm. you just saw the condom in the, you can't say condom. You just sh- saw a condom in the, in the previous scene. Mm-hmm. Right. True. Actually, they're really weird about that stuff because like we, when we talked about when we, on our worst of episode, when we talked about the craft legacy. They talk about a used condom and they take great. It's Austin powers editing to not show this used mm-hmm. condom in this scene in the craft. Oh, legacy. Really? Yes. Yeah. There, oh, so, yeah. A character oh, literally yeah. has her arm out and is holding it out. And it's like Austin powers. There's always stuff in the way. Every it's, shot. It, yeah. It's they like, cut it's like a Roman yeah. camera shot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was quite on the condom. Yeah. It was ridiculous. It like, was <laughs> comical how much they yeah. were, they were talking, but they wouldn't say the word either. They were like, Oh, is that, is it used? That was like how the mm-hmm. discussion went. So you can't say it and you can't show it, apparently. Yeah, yeah, but, but we all know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, but, but. but in this case, like it felt a little different because I feel like just her character, she's so she's such a like insecure, not comfortable with herself or her surroundings character that I, maybe she was nervous to even say the word. You know, like that's Bridget, yeah, Bridget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I I can see that. I, I can, can see, see her that. being so shy that she she can't even bring herself to say the word. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I think Carrie. So I think it works for her. Right. I don't think so. <laughs> that's another movie that this obviously feels a lot that it has yeah. a, a debt to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Aside from the school nurse, there's also another guiding force in the girl's life, mm-hmm. and this would be their mother. Oh, mom, wonderful. Pamela. It's definitely not their father. <laughs> Played by the uh, irreplaceable uh, Mimi Rogers. Mm-hmm. I mean, in this part, right? She's perfect. <laughs> yeah, she's perfect. She's pitch perfect. Is she a good mom or a bad mom? I think she's, she's a- very. I I actually I actually appreciate I actually appreciated this because I, you know when we first started watching it and obviously these girls are staging these death scenes I was like where the fuck are their parents like why are they not worried about them but I started thinking about it and then when we got more of the character development we see that her parent their parents are having problems they're going to marriage counseling there's clearly something going on I was like when I was 14 my parents were going through some shit and I was a really troubled kid and they didn't notice. I'm like, this makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. This makes total sense to me. So like the fact that we learn more about her parents and that they're having these issues, I'm like, it all makes sense. Yeah. I don't feel like that she's a bad mom, but I feel like she's a distracted mom. I, I think she's well-intentioned, but she's yeah. still overbearing and has no sense of boundaries. Very true. She needs to respect some boundaries with her kid. Cause Holy shit. I, I mean, I haven't shared a bathroom with like a family member in a long time, but God, if my mom just came in the bathroom while I was bathing, I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, See, now I kind of related to the mom a little bit. Now being the, the only parent. <laughs> God, how are you going to follow this up? That I, no, just, just Sean's exactly, the only parent just like, here. Just be like, this is my fucking house. I'll barge into any room that I want to. <laughs> like, I kind of understand that. Now she is, no, she's obviously overbearing, but you know, she's, you know, she's trying. She's that yeah. typical that suburban mom. She's got the little curls on the little Jan. Oh yeah, Brady the, the Jan curls. curls. But yeah. the thing is, the more you push past those boundaries, we're gonna get real off course here. But um, you're you're teaching your kid that it's okay to do that and it's okay to accept that from people, and you are f- forcing them to be more closed off with you. Because they know that you're just going to barge in anyway, so oh, they're going to. Any of this is you know. correct or the best way to raise your child. <laughs> but there was the there was a moment later on when she when the mom's talking to Bridget and she's and Bridget's just trying to like get her to move past the situation where she's just like you know she likes that you you take the hands off approach yeah. and she's like you notice that you like that and I was like okay so she's she's a parent that's trying things yeah. and she's she doesn't know what she's doing yeah. but she's trying. You yeah. know, that's the yeah. that's the impression I get. No, she's extremely well intentioned, is yeah. what I got out of it. Yeah. But it's the um, she's like Marge Simpson. <laughs> I don't know why that just came she, to me. Her whole life, she's been waiting, like you know, for her girls to come to her for advice. She's yeah. like, mm-hmm. I've gone through this before you, and I can't wait to be the 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 font of knowledge. Kids don't want right? that. 
no. whatsoever. <laughs> no. I don't hear a fucking thing you have to say. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I think, driving like a wedge between her and the kids. And there's obviously like a wedge between her and her husband. The irony is that her husband actually does kind of start to suspect that like the kids are up to no good. Yeah. But he's completely unable to like even really voice that opinion. She shuts them down and all yeah. this other stuff. So it's like these girls are out there with no real, uh, you know, um, what would you say? Like uh, guidance. Yeah. Well, I was going to say something to rein them in or whatever. They're yeah. just, you know, no discipline, Colin, no discipline. There you go. Because of the, yeah, her, her approach, I guess, which she was trying, but I did feel bad for her at the end. There's a, a, a really good scene. I thought, where she's in the car with Bridget yeah. and she knows that they've killed somebody at this yeah. point. This and is delightful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what happened? <laughs> well, she says so she has the fingers of, of the girl that, that they killed and buried in their yard. And, She's like, I'll just fill the house up with gas and uh, we'll get a fresh start somewhere else. Like, she's literally willing to burn it all down yep. for them, yeah. you know? Yeah. Which, like, honestly, I don't see a better way out of this. This is probably the best plan. Like, I mean, you have a dead like girl under kick, your shed. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you're not, you're not getting out of this. No. no. This, is this, is one of my, this is one of my worst nightmares. When you, uh, uh, to accidentally kill someone, but then only you know, and you're just like... You have no the, proof it was an accident? Yeah. yeah. It's like, but the, I, I you're the only one who knows they're dead, but then you go through like the rest of your day. Yeah. Just like, oh, I've had nightmares like this. Not good. <laughs> like, yeah, because like, especially in this country, we love to convict on circumstantial evidence. So like, yeah, if there's no fucking hard evidence, you didn't do something. The jury's going to definitely think you did. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I wouldn't want to be on trial for an accidental murder that I was the only other person present for. Like, but this is Canada. That. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, they you know walk what? in, they go, oh, must have been an accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, That's their first thought. You can like, bring oh, your Rottweiler to school in Canada. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Smoke I, gym class. <laughs> bringing the Rottweiler to school. Holy shit. Like, yeah. this is just like, even like as a writing choice in this movie is a weird choice to make. Like, we're going to have the popular girl. Like, she's not enough of a bully on her own. She needs to have a junkyard I mean, dog gotta, with her. Maybe this is where they don't get subtle. Or, yeah. you know, they're just really going for it. Yeah. I love Rottweilers. Okay. I just want to yeah. smush its face. Yeah. The only thing it's I so can cute. see is it was, it was, they had, in order to have like an economy of scenes, right? It's like, we got to show that she has a dog because the dog is going to become like, you know, they go, the, the sisters want to kill the dog, stage it to make it look like the Beast of Bailey Downs got mm -hmm. it. But we only have this scene. Otherwise, we'd have to do a scene away from the school. Mm -hmm. So she just brings her dog to school why on not? this day. Like, right. Why not? You know, <laughs> it's like, OK, right. yeah, the economy right. is like, get it in there somehow. Yeah. Well, Mimi Rogers has a couple of other really great scenes. There's one uh, where she uh, celebrates her daughter's uh, <laughs> first period by <laughs> making this. Uh, how would you describe that cake? It's like got like like a like a jam or a preserve on it or something. So it's like a looks like a bloody cake. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's basically like a strawberry drizzle cake. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's that's no, it's <laughs> it's a drizzle no, cake. Just that's the what word it is. drizzle. <laughs> that's what it is. I know. <laughs> just there was a lot of drizzling in this movie. It just, but it, it basically was. looks like a bloody cake. Yeah. 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 And there's a scene where uh, after we've talked about there's a uh, two there's disturbing a, cakes in a row. Holy shit! Yeah. We had that what was that harvest oh, cake yeah, last was, week? Yeah. And yeah. Oh god! With the flies in it or, yeah. or whatever. Um, there, there's another scene where after they've they've killed this girl, uh, it's a, by accident, but yeah. you know, then they bury her in the backyard and they accidentally sever her fingers, and that becomes like a thing that's discovered later. But uh, to distract mom from seeing the body that they've got in the uh, freezer in the basement, uh, Bridget's like, you know, <laughs> mom, I, 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 you know, she's thinking fast. She's like, how can I distract mom? <laughs> mom, tell me what boys want. Tell me what boys want. And she's just like, <laughs> great editing in this. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, oh, the way she reacts, like, chef's I've kiss been waiting to this editing. My whole life for my daughter <laughs> right. to ask me this question, and then it just cuts. She oh, took man. time to bake cookies yeah. for this. <laughs> yeah, cookies, milk. That's probably, and that's what men want. <laughs> and no, and no one has touched the milk or the cookies. No, those glasses yeah, are completely full. full. You never do it. Yeah, like, yeah. I gotta get through be, this. I'm like, that'd be a hard conversation to eat through. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my. Do you guys remember all those awkward conversations just white knuckling it through with your parents? I'm so glad I don't have to have those anymore. Thank 
God. <laughs> like, not even just sex, but just about anything that was ever uncomfortable. Like, See, my parents are very <sighs> non-confrontational, so I think they avoided all of those conversations with me. See, so. I never got them, but they always looked at me and went, do you have any questions? <laughs> and you're like, God, no, you never. To me. I will like, never and I'm have questions. Like, Mom, <laughs> literally I'm never. I will, but I'm good. I can figure it out. I got Google. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now I don't want. Plus, I don't want whatever your experience you had, was. You had Google. <laughs> yeah, here's yeah. you too. Yeah, how fucking old are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you? Twelve? Yeah. <laughs> Did Sean did you, you had asked you Sean had asked did, Jeeves. I was gonna say <laughs> yeah, 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 I was gonna say, did you just get the sex talk like last year? <laughs> Shut up, guys. <laughs> Come on, you guys are all dumb. <laughs> well, there's another major character in the movie, and this is uh the uh well, I guess he's the drug dealer, right? Yeah. Uh Sam. Yeah. He's a dr- This is it's the Josh weed. Hartnett from like, the faculty no, of this he, movie. He's He's on the wall now, guys. That's right. Oh my God. <laughs> He's on the wall? For MF two Mad. other movies I brought. Uh, <laughs> MF Mad, the Kicker of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. We've actually inducted two, two people. Ooh. Catherine Isabel as well, right? Who? Catherine Isabel was the other one. Is she on the wall? No. Nah. No, maybe no, not. It's no. possible. But Who's on no. the wall? Okay, <laughs> Chris Chris Lemchi is yeah. the actor uh, who plays Sam. He was also in Final Destination 3. Okay. Yep, and yeah. he was in In Time. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I forgot we did In Time. Yep. yep. In and Time. Then, uh, Justin Timberlake in Amanda. Yeah. She brought it. Yeah. I brought Wait, it. What is In Time? Oh, well, Justin, Justin Timberlake. Timberlake yeah. Movie, yeah. I thought it was the Domino Gleason movie. No. About Time. Yeah. I love that movie. No, no. Yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. no, no. <laughs> in Time was the, you got the digital clock on your wrist right, and you yeah. run out of time and you die. About Time. Was yes. like if love actually was about time travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love that movie. Right. Uh, Chris Lemchi is also in that movie that feels like I'm summoning My Little Eye, which I've mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> like, I think yeah, the past you have. Episodes. He's. You look at his IMDb. He's been in a lot of stuff you forgot about yeah. over the past twenty years. You're like, oh shit, he pops up in everything. Yeah, he has done a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesse Moss is the other uh, mm-hmm. actor who we're putting on the wall. Jesse was the gusher. The Gusher Kid. <laughs> gusher Kid. Who's, gusher Kid. Yeah, he's the jock that uh, did we, eventually... Did, did we specify you, you why we're calling him that? Yeah. Oh, in the middle of... I, could have, I swear this kid is in a Gushers commercial. Like, <laughs> I'm looking at him, and he's just still got that that young... Because his actors are young. Like, yeah. this guy looks they like are. he's in high school in this movie. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's just a, gusher, a Gushers commercial that sticks in my head where their heads turn into fruit. Yeah. And I swear to God, so, I swear to God he's one of them. Which fruit did he turn into? Which kid? Which fruit kid the was it? I think he was a red one. Okay, Maybe well, at, when we're done recording, we're going to look up the commercials and see if I, we can oh, yeah, see oh, if yeah. Jesse Moss yeah, is yeah. in it. Well, he was also in Final Destination 3. Oh, oh shit. Forgot about that. He was in Wolf Cop. Oh, wow. Uh, there you go. Another Canadian uh, film. Yeah. It's all about the Canada tonight. So it Final Destination 3 is a lot of overlap with Canada? Because it was right, filmed so in yeah. Canada <laughs> by the X-Files so people. that's one of those uh, that uh, movie game movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like name an actor from this movie. And now actor. you know, yep. listener. So, all right, so that's Final Destination right. 3 yeah. is one of those movies. Yeah, Jesse Moss movies. and that Chris Lemchie. JFK. Yeah. JFK yeah. is actually a really good go-to because yeah. the cast is stacked for that movie. JFK. Yep. We could probably use It's cast. a good handoff mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, so what is the function of uh, Sam in this movie, the drug dealer? Well, he he's the one who kills the werewolf at the beginning, mm-hmm. an accident. And he hits the werewolf with the truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which like, I, yeah. Now that you say that, I kind of like. It's weird that they're just like, oh, that original werewolf out of the movie now, yeah. and it's like, never oh becomes shit, human. that's it. Yeah, never dealt with so and so's missing. You know, yep. at the same time, nothing. Right. Yeah, we don't give a fuck about whoever that they is. Apparently, yeah. yep. yep, that's okay. That's yeah. not that's not the story. Yeah. That's right. It's just okay. interesting because so every any other werewolf movie would try to explain yeah. the yeah, but it, that. It may not be within the girls' world, right? You know, like right. they, they right. wouldn't be aware of it because it seems like Bridget is the central character. Mm-hmm. She's the one that we see the movie through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So who? What? Uh, what? Sam and what's his story? He's like the he's like fills the mythology role. Like he's the one doing the research to figuring out mm-hmm. how do we beat this. He's our mystic from yeah, the last and movie. He, he's qualified because he sells drugs, and <laughs> he he seems like he's that guy that was like nineteen or twenty that would always hang out at the high school, and you're like, why? Why is well, this guy what, hanging out? He's the yeah. Josh Hartnett of this movie because yeah. he's just yeah. like he's uh he's the guy who like 
uh, his tests say he, he tests off the charts. He's very smart right. and everything, but he's just a, a yeah. slacker and shit just because. Yeah. Yeah. And he works if, this, the, if this were a period movie, he's the apothecary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Well, he works at the, uh, the, greenhouse. the county greenhouse. <laughs> and, you know, so he's a uh, horticulturist. Is that what we're going yes. 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 And yes. he knows that uh, monkshood apparently is the cure for werewolf is lycanthropism, mm-hmm. yes. like lycanthropy. But there before, you go. we have really. the most 90s solution ever to werewolfism. You get a piercing, Colin. Oh, well, of course. Obviously. Yeah, silver Obviously. Per piercing. Yeah. yeah. Ginger Which, doesn't like that too much. No, that, that was a gross scene. That was Didn't probably the most, uh, honestly, that was probably the most horrific scene in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just because she goes to the jab and you're just like, oh, that skin's not breaking. Yeah. 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 The uh, needle's not sharp enough and no. it's not breaking. And it's like a big it's, four needle. Yeah. I feel, yeah. It felt like it was a sewing needle she was yeah. trying to, to go through her belly button with. Um, Ginger's transformation also Just includes pull this. And yeah. It's like no, let's attach it to your body. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty rough. It doesn't do anything, of course. But Ginger's transformation also involves uh, a tail. We usually don't get <laughs> oh this in God. movies. This is uh, it starts as one funny. little nub, like a little like <laughs> like when you see dogs with a little nub tail. That's what it starts yeah. in. It's like it a pointy wiggles. nub. Yeah, yeah. She ends up having to tape it to her leg, which. I don't know why hilarious. that was so funny, but it, <laughs> it is funny. I it's mean, really tell me funny. about her icon. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, as I was saying, she was going to have to get a cup and wear it on her ass something, or something. Yeah. yeah. You're just like, yeah. yeah, does it feel pain? Like if yeah. she gets hit with a soccer ball right there. Is it, right. Is it the same? Well, what, was, <laughs> what was really funny is they were taping it to her leg, but it was still sticking out the bottom of her shorts. And that's what made it really, yeah. really funny. And then she later <laughs> tries to saw it off with a uh, butcher knife. Yeah. Mm. Yikes. Ouch! You figure it's yeah. gonna hurt a little bit. Yeah. Well, because after eventually Ginger becomes like she goes through a couple phases. One is the you know I'm maturing faster than you. Fuck off to her sister. Right mm-hmm. then there's the I killed the neighbor's dog. There's something really wrong Great with phase. me. I'm a monster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love that. Phase. Then there's the there's no coming back from this. I may as well just become more of you know of this thing she's embracing it yeah. well yeah. and like because all they ever want is to be independent right and what's more like i'm my own person and independent than being a fucking werewolf right right you yeah. know so yeah. she's like i'm gonna lean into this there is a point when she says you know to to bridget you know it's like well you should come with me on this ride you know mm-hmm. she uh is like okay well i'll give you the the curse also you'll mm-hmm. become a werewolf with me and you know bridget's like not having any of it you mm-hmm. know um but it becomes up to uh, Bridget and then Sam with the uh, new um, injection of monkshood. They're going to try it. That's why they test it out on mm-hmm. the first, uh, the jock guy who becomes mm-hmm. infected. And it works. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it doesn't kill him. Yeah. Did we did we explain that it's it's an STD? That that's how he gets it? Oh, it's yeah, like he's, transmitted his dick that way? starts bleeding at school. His dick starts bleeding? Uh, yeah. yeah. But it, it was my favorite line in the movie when they were about to go do it and Bridget yells, she's ovulating. <laughs> <laughs> Which very, any, that was, I suppose a high school kid would be like, I don't even know what that means. Yeah. That was my favorite but, line. <laughs> that felt very much like a Diablo Cody moment It really to me. did. I was like, oh right. my God. Well, it would all be really called if they like yeah. pulled away. She yelled it and he pulled back in and all you hear is her getting out of the car. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, we should be giving, Or him kicking her out. <laughs> yeah. It's like, nope. We should be giving some credit to uh, Karen Walton is the writer, the writer. of this movie. Yeah. 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 She came up with all these lines. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of dialogue in this that I didn't care for. Like it didn't sound like high school kids to no, me. Some it's, of it's a little yeah. clunky. Yeah. You know. A lot of it I didn't care for, yeah. but there was certain lines. That line was mm-hmm. spectacular. Yeah, I <laughs> think it's one of those laugh. movies that weighs heavier on like the stuff that works versus the stuff that doesn't. Right. But yeah. The stuff that doesn't is still there. It was ve- like, again, it's very Diablo Cody where they're yeah. saying certain things. I'm like, no one would talk like that. Yeah, I know yeah. I don't yeah. live in Canada, but no one would talk like that. Yeah. Yeah. Diablo Cody will have like one good line and then run it into the ground with four bad ones. after. Yeah. It. And you're just exactly. like, OK, you should have stopped while you were ahead. Right. You know, like that's how this movie is. Yeah. Sometimes too. It's, it's like, OK. Similar. Yeah. You don't need to be that heavy handed. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Yeah. we're doing good. Mm hmm. Yeah, we're not mad. We're just disappointed. <laughs> well, Ginger ends up uh, committing full full on murder because that's basically yeah. what she, you know, her new animal self wants to do. So she's <laughs> not actually like transforming. Is this is one of those movies that does the werewolf thing where uh, you were bit on a full moon and then you're going to gradually your personality will change first. Yeah, and then you'll go through a physical like. Well, you. I mean, there's a fi- the slight physical changes, but like. Mostly, it's it's like that Jack Nicholson movie Wolf. Yeah. It's like no, you're gonna like access your alpha side. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I thought about that a lot mm-hmm. while while watching mm-hmm. this. Um, 
That's why I was expecting the second werewolf. Was that the first movie with the second werewolf? It might have been. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I forgive you for doing it, Wolf. I didn't like it then, but you know. But we you're the stop first. I'll let it slide. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lots of passes tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, she uh, she does actually like take on. I guess a, there is a physical transfer pre transformation where I mean her face is all covered in latex. She looks rubber. like the vampires in Buffy. That was my problem with this. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're, yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're expecting a werewolf woman and we get the, a Buffy vampire. Yes, yeah. That's exactly, like exactly what she looks like. The eyebrows like. and the yeah. nose piece yeah. and that's it. Yeah. 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 And she gets like her hair goes all white and she's able to go out in uh, public because uh, it's Halloween. Right. That right. This takes place on. So there's a Halloween party and she's able to go to that uh, where she's trying to drive a wedge between uh, Sam and Bridget. Um, and that's also like, I thought mom got written out of the movie, you know, like just kind of just ejected from the movie. I mm-hmm. guess so she had that good speech and I, I was like, they should have just left it there. We never should have saw her again, but we do right. see her coming into the, into the greenhouse looking for the girls, which listeners, if you've ever been to a Halloween party in a greenhouse, let us know what it was like and where, yeah. where you're located. What country specifically? Is, yeah. is this a cultural thing? Like It's the equivalent of the, the, the barn, barn party. party. Yeah. yeah. But like mm-hmm. a greenhouse gets hot. You get hot and sweaty yeah, in there. But you know? uh, I suppose it's still I mean, hot house. That's, that's yeah, it's still glass. It. Yeah. 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 Like if it's cold out here, yeah. it's going to be hot in here. It yeah. seems like a bad idea. Yeah, it, it does. It really does. That's right. Go have your party in a mine like any decent, self-respecting Canadians would do. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, at least there's a, it's a ride, you know? Yeah. <laughs> nothing else. A very slow, mm-hmm. boring ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they end up back at the house. This is where we're going to have like our final confrontation. And so this is where Catherine Isabel le- leaves the movie. There's a transformation mm-hmm. scene because, again, if you're going to do a werewolf movie... It is required. It's incumbent upon you to have your main character mm-hmm. actually have like a latex transformation. Yeah. You got to go full on transformation. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I always grade these things on like, okay, we saw probably the very best werewolf transformation, I think. American Werewolf in London. I are think we, that's are we... universally agreed yeah. upon. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> other people will argue because for the Because that Halloween. was what? No, that is the that gold was standard. Whatever, Almost 20 years before this saw. movie? Yeah. Yeah. And still oh, better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's the best <laughs> that video. That video that video. circulates on YouTube and right, Facebook Right, the guy in the blue shit. shirt and he's just like... <laughs> it, where it's just it like... Cuts, cuts and he's like... And his hair. It's just like jump cuts to like him having hair pasted on his face. Yes. Where are we putting Thriller in this? I mean, that's a good one. That's a solid one. doesn't count because it's my number one because it's scared the shit out of yeah, me as a child. Yeah, it is so, terrifying. But it but... is Rick Baker just doing his right. American mm-hmm. Werewolf transformation. Yes, yes. Right? Okay. But, it, well, in American Werewolf, it's like in, like, fluorescent light. Like, it, yeah. they're not covering it up with shadows or cuts. Yeah, it's, that you're is seeing a, it at all. A bright, like, yeah. here's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's so impressive, it's I think. It's mold. Because yeah. the howling one does it through a bunch through of, shadow like, yeah. shadow. Mm-hmm. And it looks a little faker than everything else. Mm-hmm. It's still really good. I like it. So, I guess, is that the thing? Is there a rule, if any of us are going to make a werewolf movie, you have to do it better than American Werewolf in London? I mean, should. like, isn't that You the, need to aim for that. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. your I goal. Don't, I don't know if it can be topped at this point, but that's what you need to aim for. Yeah. All right, so how'd they do? I mean, <laughs> I I mean, I knew it was going to be uh, choppy editing because she's in the back of a truck at night. So like, mm-hmm. but I like the idea of under the streetlights, you see the progress of it. I thought yeah. that was really cool. And the one half of her face being swollen was, I think, yeah, interesting. That was- yeah, that was creepy. It does. Yeah, the actual, it, it doesn't yeah. feel like a w- werewolf, though. The actual, yeah, yeah. the That's actual the- transformation, like the way it's executed, I enjoy it. I like that. I think it's effective. But the end result, I think, is where I have my issues. Oh, okay. That also yeah. doesn't during help. the transformation yeah. too, because a lot of they cut, like Michaela was saying, as they're going past these lights, so we get like a wipe, uh, you know, like fade out. Yeah, fade mm-hmm. up, fade out, fade up, fade out. But it's never on the same thing twice. It's always right. like fade mm-hmm. up. Here's her spine doing something. Man. Fade up. Here's this swollen face expanding. And it all looks like, you know, to me, Halloween masks. But, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and then uh, so she does become like the full on werewolf. Now we've gone like this entire movie. And actually, I say to this to the movie's credit that it's a werewolf movie with really no werewolf in it. Right. Yeah. Until the very end, like the last 10 minutes of the movie or even maybe it's five minutes. I don't even know where we are at mm-hmm. this point. Um, where it actually does, we do get to see the beast. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I thought the most impressive thing they did at one point, there's like... Jump a, the table? It, yeah. 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 Yeah, that this is the one that has boobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it so it yeah because when it jumped the table that was kind of cool, but it's almost like I don't know. Okay, we, we got to get the temperature of the room here. I thought they showed it too much. They showed their their the rubber monster too just, many times, just in yeah. total, mm-hmm. and they're barely showing it. But they even then I'm saying they showed it too many times. I didn't. I I'd rather see it too much than not enough. You know. But if you see it too much, does it read as more fake? I feel like they're confident in their choice if they're showing it that much. So I, I'm trusting them and their judgment, if that makes sense. I don't know. Like, it's frustrating when it's like a werewolf movie and then all, everything happens off screen. You know, mm-hmm. I hate that. Mm-hmm. I hate that. That's very true. So I think I would have been more. Again, I have my problems with what the final werewolf looks like. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. um, I think showing it more is probably uh, maybe yeah, a detriment I, to the movie. But I. <sighs> It's I'm I, I don't have a problem with it. I'm not gonna sit here and yeah. like point it out and pick it out and be like I have a real big problem with them. Like it's fine. I it's it's, it. it's it's the design of it. If it was a if I liked the design better, I'd have no problem with how much they showed it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's full on the end of, the end result. Yeah, yeah, when they're in that hallway and it's just it's there at the end. I'm just like oh it's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they it's just all show, there. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's not like coming around at the end of the hallway. It's just like yeah. it's there, and, yeah. it, and it just hangs out. It looks like a puppet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. The, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I like puppets, but you know, it, yeah, it looks like <laughs> it a looks like a puppet. Right. Yeah. I feel like we saw a lot of the dog soldiers werewolves, and those looked really, really good. Yeah, they well, yeah, yeah. because it yeah. exactly were pretty good looking. They weren't naked. They had covered in fur. That's a good example. Like, and they were uh, they were like an elongated. They were really tall. Yeah, taller monster and everything. So you saw them in full light, and so and like as in that case, like I did not mind that they were showing in the match because they looked awesome. And it's something you know, I've never seen like a that version of it. It felt they had the really long claws. Yeah, yeah, they're really wiry. It's a great movie. It well, is. we have, go listen to our episode on it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we have the idea that basically Bridget and Sam have the serum. They're going to go find uh, Ginger the wolf in the basement of the house, which is under construction, I think, because the girls also seem to sleep in like the killer's lair from seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, that's really how is. they like it, Colin. Yeah. Because yeah. they're all goth and all that. Um, so that's where the end of this movie takes place. And. Um, so they're going to basically stab uh, Ginger. Ginger's going to come back to uh, normal. And also uh, Bridget, In uh, when when Ginger was last human, they did this. Uh, they cut their wrists. Yeah, because they're all about packs. Yeah. Yeah. They've got they their, their pack. suicide pact, and now, they're, mm-hmm. now she's trying to lure her back home by making a new pact with her, and she infects her. Yep, if so they now- both went the full werewolf route, this whole town would be dead in a week. Right. Right. Like. Yeah. That's they would be the new new plague plague on. But this that's earth. why yeah. Bridget knows that this is. Yeah. She's still got enough sense to you know. Right. She's still yeah. on the human side of the equation, I suppose. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe it would have been different if, if Bridget had gotten bitten. A uh, Ginger's character seems more like she would go this route, you know, right. regardless. Yeah. Um, but I guess this is like a, so. I mean, what do we think of the ending? Because uh, none of that what I just described actually happens. Uh, the the Sam gets killed uh, mm-hmm. um, and Bridget, even though she has the syringe in these last moments, there's like a tussle and she ends up stabbing uh, the wolf mm-hmm. and the wolf dies, you know? Mm-hmm. And so like the end of the movie is like uh, the ginger wolf dies. Sam but you dead. see the last breath go out. That's what makes it so sad. Oh, yeah, yeah. They linger on it. Oh, too. she yeah. like, like, hugs the wolf. She's and, like laying and, yeah. on it. And you see, it's like, it's like that scene in Jurassic Park where you see like the side. She's of the rising going up and down. With, yeah. With her chest. But then yeah. you see like one big breath and then just the chest just drops. And that's what makes it's sad. it so it's sad. sad. Yeah. Cause you're expecting the like, Oh, she's going to turn back into a person moment. And it mm. never happens. Never happens. Yeah. 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 It yeah. never comes. Beast, yeah. yeah. And that, yeah. Ugh, that makes it extra sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess we have the hope that since Bridget still had like, cause I was, I was, when she looked at her hand, mm-hmm. you know, and, it, and she opens it and the syringe is still there. Mm-hmm. I expected it to be broken. Yeah. You know, or something like there goes yeah, your right. cure also, but no, she still does have the cure. So I guess the implication is that Bridget will still be able to save herself. Um, but she's still going to death row for that girl in her shed. Yeah. Unless we get to the sequel and it starts with mom burning down the house <laughs> and them getting in a van. 
I hope it does, man. No, it doesn't. Ah! <laughs> there are two sequels to this movie. So one yeah. of them follows uh, Bridget, and she's in a, I don't know if it's a halfway house or a treatment center, a psychiatric ward, probably for the murders and all that. Mm -hmm. But she's still basically fighting off the lycanthropy, and I believe Ginger shows up as kind of ghost sister, you know, to, oh, to talk like to her. Oh, like American Werewolf in London. Yeah. That's a, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the third one is like a really radical, like, what the hell are you doing here? It's called Ginger, Stri or Ginger, Ginger Snaps, Snaps Back. Back. Ginger Snaps Back. And Perfect. It's cool. Yeah. Perfect. And it takes place in like the 1890s Oof. or something like that at it a fort. In, terrible. And these two sisters arrive. I mean, it's, it's the two same actresses. Yeah arrive at this like French fort in the Quebec or wherever the hell it is. And you're like, I do not see the connection between this and, and where we came from. You know, I saw I Fear Street do that over the summer and it was very bad. I, I was going to say, we don't saw don't this over yeah. the summer. <laughs> I think it's yeah. family lineage. They yeah. get into something yeah. like that. But that is, that is a dreary There's movie. always been werewolves in Canada. <laughs> is that for that one? I don't know. Yeah. Wolf so, cop. Wolf cop, dude. I don't know. He's well, Saskatchewan there, or something there. like that. Mm -hmm. Are they yeah. related to Bigfoots? And are they only up there too? <laughs> Canada's uh, keeping a lot of secrets from I us. Probably. Is what I've... I don't blame them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that where Nessie vacations? Yeah. Right? Yeah. In Canada? They're, yeah. sa they're like a safe haven for cryptids. I think so. <laughs> this is the purpose of Canada. Yeah. Yeah. We have figured it out. I dig it. All right. Mm -hmm. Tell us. You can write in. To the Saturday Night Freak Show. We should probably tell people oh, how to do that. It. Well, okay. So uh, we're going to tell you if uh, we liked Ginger Snaps, if you should watch it. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to... Uh, well, first, we're going to read some of your mail. And uh, to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Or, do we know for a fact he's not a... Where a where a cryptid? Yeah. Oh, yeah, does he vacation in Canada ever? Well, I mean, he definitely is some. Well, I mean, right? Is that what all wears are cryptids? You know how there's like a bo like Bohemian Grove? Is there like a Bohemian Grove for cryptids <laughs> in Canada? They all go meet up once a year and party for like two weeks straight. And I mean, can you imagine <laughs> Igor to rave? I was like, isn't that the, isn't I that see. the plot of Hotel Transylvania? <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. basically yeah. I mean, <laughs> Colin does his PTO, so we'll have to check, you know, the oh, records yeah. and What's see. The, uh, and see. Yeah. Check his say? time card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if if you know that, uh, you know, if you're a Canadian listener and you know, have that you some ever of run stuff into Igor? Yeah. Is going on? Yeah. I mean, we're asking that you specifically write into us. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, have you seen this Igor? <laughs> That's right. Do you action, have any cryptid stories? <laughs> action figure coming soon, right? The Igor action figure. <gasps> no, we should have one. Why don't we have How dare you say that and not have one on okay, right fine. now? Okay, fine. Sorry. Rude. Sorry about that. All right. Rude. About tonight's movie, Ginger Snaps, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, Ginger Snaps is a perennial that I seem to find on every VHS or DVD shelf I've found myself in front of. I can't say I've ever actually watched it, but I've always found it amusing that every couple of years another sequel would show up on those same shelves. It does seem to have something of a cult following. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, sure does. I love that the artwork has not changed since this movie came out. No one's done like special edition artwork. It's <laughs> just like here's that '90s poster you wanted. Yeah. Well, the the wait didn't the uh, yeah the, the new Scream Factory one is a different. That is this a, one in front yeah, of us. That is a painted one. Because uh, I remember I had to get the Canadian DVD to actually get like a widescreen version of the movie uh, back in the 2000s. Wow. Uh, Mark Zidon says I absolutely love this movie. I remember catching this on late night HBO. There you go. Yep. With nice. my dad at the beginning of the movie, we were both confused on where they were going with the movie. But the second the werewolf action kicked in, we were both hooked. Great visual effects for an indie movie. And it even spawned two decent sequels. Hmm. I haven't seen any of the sequels, but maybe. All right. Maybe. There you go. The perennial. <laughs> it could happen. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's our. It's like, maybe. Yeah. We're all very optimistic in the, the mailbag. We're like, oh, maybe. <laughs> the next time I have to mandatorily watch a Canadian horror movie, I guess I'll just watch one of those. Well, you're you know? gonna, yeah, you're going to see a lot probably. It's like uh, a booster shot. You're going to get yeah. one like once a year, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Adam Kaler writes in and says, Ginger Snaps was a pretty fun movie and a breath of fresh air in what feels like a misrepresented subgenre. 
I believe Catherine Isabel did a great job, and the story kept me interested. Of course, it's no howling. New Moon Rising with its line dancing werewolves. Woo! Wow. I'm going to wow. put that on my list because yep. I, I don't know much about the Howling sequels, so oh, now I'm going to look into that one. I think I've seen all but that one. Is that number seven? Is that There's Howling seven, seven of those movies? No, there's like oh nine. My... There's a lot. Shut up. Yeah, I thought oh, there was like four. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the Howling, is, oh my it, God. that's a thing. Okay, yeah. Uh, but uh, Adam says, anyways, I hope everyone is safe and having a fun holiday season. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Are indeed. Happy, Happy holidays Halloween. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, G Money says, dead dogs in films really bum me out. But aside from that, this film is a classic. Even though the monster is mostly hidden, the design and scenes where it appears are solid. There you go. Uh, He says, both ladies are believable as sisters, and Isabel seems to be enjoying playing Ginger. Sequels are fun as well. I like that they cast people that were like age appropriate. You know, yeah. Yeah. like how <laughs> it's too often we see 35 year olds playing teenagers, yeah, you know, like kids. Yeah. Like, These look like high schoolers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. they do. Yeah. Uh, Joey Blythe says, I recall this being a great movie, but that was literally half my life ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I'm about to rewatch it on Tubi. There you go. Oh, yeah, it's on Tubi. Tubi's getting a lot more. Uh, their, their commercials are not greatly timed on Tubi. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, maybe you go with the premium version. Where I, think I got enough subscription that. services. I'm right. right. Me one. Uh, Artie sixty four one oh nine says, "Okay, this is a question for the group. I guess who mm-hmm. has the best werewolf transformation? Is it American Werewolf in London, Ginger Snaps, The Howling, or Trick or Treat?" I think we answered, I think we answered that yeah, already. I but it. I mean, for Trick or Treat is good for that movie and for that time. Because you like that really was an indie much, movie though. too. No, I mean you see one is, snout come out. It's cool, but the way they disrobe, like yeah. taking off clothes, but yeah. their skin and everything. Yeah. yeah, the way they do it, I like yeah. it. Trick or treat. That's because you haven't grist. seen. Grist. That's because you haven't seen the Company of Wolves, which did that in like nineteen eighty four. Yeah, that movie's weird. Yeah, I'm it's, sorry, I didn't well, see. Every I think we still say it's American Werewolf. I've seen every werewolf movie. I'm trying. I'm I'm working on it. Tracking them down. Okay. Uh, B. Shaw Foolery said, oh, sorry, but this is about, um, oh no, Chris Huddleston. Right? See heads! Chuds. Chuds. That's right. Where, <laughs> where have you been, sir? Yeah. He says, after the howling in American Werewolf in London, this is my favorite werewolf movie. Oh, there you hey, go. Yeah, that's a good list. Go. Uh, about last week's movie, which was Drag Me to Hell, B. Shaw Foolery says, while I love Sam Raimi's works and Drag Me to Hell, was the main character the good guy or the bad guy? She wasn't necessarily innocent, <laughs> but it's not like she murdered anyone. Damn you for bringing this we back up. We can't relitigate Damn this. You. We cannot. We can't do this again. Okay, yeah. but to his credit, he has not heard the episode okay. yet. All so. right. Well, this All is right. why I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go listen to the episode. Listen to the that episode. is literally the entire right. but episode. It, but it does bring it about, the <laughs> question, because he also brought it up and has yeah. not listened to the episode. So I think we, uh, I thought about it uh, more this week. I think it's the actress, and I think that is... What I'm sticking I with. I think so too, because I like I said, actress. I think Dana De Lorenzo from Ash vs. Evil Dead would have been a much better choice. Something. I think the different actors could have pulled off a lot yeah. more yeah. and done the switches from, because she's very calm, but yeah. then switches to the, like when she yells, she get done. your fucking pig knuckle off my desk and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she could have done more with it. Yeah. yeah, I think it was, uh, I think it's the actress. And that's not that's saying she's a bad actress. No, 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 not just miscast. Yeah, yeah. She just exactly. she's not a bad actress. Yeah. Did we all say that last week? Yeah. I think we got because But it's one of those things that at first you're like no I liked her and then you're like boy but that doesn't mean she was good for this right. role the more, exactly. yeah, yeah, the more, exactly. the more yeah, I thought exactly. about it I'm like I don't think this was right for yeah her, I do not dislike her at all I think she's great but right. just not in that, yeah. Right for that yeah. yeah. Uh, well also about the movie Travis Legler writes in and says regarding your side note of talking about Army of Darkness and Ash versus Evil Dead I think we said that uh, because of rights issues yeah. they never reference it he says the show did reference Army of Darkness lightly uh, in one episode, Ash says, let the boomstick do the talking. And he says that the shotgun was only called the boomstick hmm. in Army of Darkness. So there's a light reference. Also, Interesting. Okay. Evil Dead 2 is better than 1. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I, agreed. Some well, people agreed. don't agree, but they're wrong. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, the previous week, we watched a movie called Malignant. Brett Williams says, oh, Colin. The Night Stalker from 1972 took place in Las Vegas with a vampire. Its sequel, The Night Strangler... From 1973, featured the Seattle Underground, where Kolchak tracks down an immortal <laughs> serial killer alchemist, who's actually Oscar, 
from the six million dollar man i don't remember if i saw the two <laughs> movies as a kid but as a five-year-old i religiously watched the 1975 to 76 show no, well i'm sure. sorry that i got that wrong i do remember like kolchak in the underground but then when i was thinking about it i'm like that's right because the end of night stalker takes place in a house so I think I got them mixed up. I apologize. Mm-hmm. I, uh, well, I want to watch yes. both now. They both sound kind of awesome, honestly. So. Well, you are in luck because uh, <laughs> there's a video company. It's not Kino. MPI or somebody is putting out The Night Stalker, the full series. I think you can get the two movies separate, but they also nice. put out like the whole series all remastered in nice, glorious, high definition. There you go. There you go. Uh, Grant Parrish says, uh, asking about Malignant. Was the the killer special weapon cool? Like it seemed like the movie thought that this was Freddy's knife fingers. It was no. pretty cool. It was I liked cool. it. I, I liked thought it. it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, because you got to have like a unique. This is what the movie knows, right? Yeah, and, and it says excellence has... on it, which I mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And he, I like the detail of carving the little grooves for the fingers. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like yeah the whole you thing. Know? Uh, yeah. I dug it. He made yeah. a grip for it. Yeah, you know? it's yeah. If nothing else, it's unique, which mm-hmm. is. Yeah, I think that's Works what you have to have, right? Yeah. And it's a it's a trope of the, the cliche that you have to have somehow. Yes. A unique weapon for your killer. Amos Martinez says, it really is the best and worst movie of the year simultaneously. I had yeah. to watch it twice, and it helped a lot knowing what you're getting the second time. This is the best 70s drive-in movie that never came out in the 70s. It came out too many years too late. Mm. That's 100%. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But ironically, I say it's it's an 80s movie, but okay. Uh, Jacob Kotner, my man, he liked my joke about the hell to pay. He said that was a classic. <laughs> can't, we can't say anymore. So, okay, <laughs> yeah. got it. Okay. All right, so uh, anyway, we're going to uh, go around the table now and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. That's Ginger Snaps, starting with... Colin, you can go first tonight. I should have been on the hot seat. What did you think of Ginger Snapping? Uh, again, I'm thinking I'm, I'm I'm still making a case, and I think we're building this uh, now, like week by week, almost. <laughs> That's all we the, do here. Uh, we're just building cases, building and cases. And we'll be that prepared the, for anything. Yeah, the two <laughs> calls the court is like the. I, I think I said the second golden age. It's like the third golden age, right? There yeah. was the original like 30s, then uh, like the 70s, and then the 2000s, um, where we got these kind of interesting original and yeah i'm saying it's original even though i'm saying well yeah teen wolf did it but ginger snaps is i think a it's where the marriage of the theme and uh you know the metaphor and the actual plot of the movie all like just land right on i mean it's like it's a perfect analogy right for i guess uh, uh the puberty experience you know um i suppose i do have problems with the ending uh, I mean, I guess maybe I would have preferred it if it had a more upbeat, like they conquer the, you know, but that's not where the movie's going in. Mm. We're let down by dodgy werewolf effects. I think like that's the biggest problem with this movie. It promises you a werewolf and the werewolf, I think, is pretty weak. But the fact, like I was just saying a couple minutes ago, that like the whole movie goes through and you really don't miss the werewolf that much, you know, uh, as you're watching the runtime is because of like these are. I mean, I still think, you know, uh, a screenplay, you know, uh, uh, we, um, gripes aside that we had, you know, some of it's like uh, a little too on spot on the nose or tone deaf or whatever. It, they're still really compelling characters. Maybe I'll mm-hmm. put it that way. Maybe mm-hmm. not the best written. No, I would say they're, they're well written. They're well rounded, established characters. The relationship that these two girls and their mom, you know, kind of have. It's like this is a compelling story. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed it. I liked it in the 2000s. I thought it stood out. Uh, it was the first time, I think, probably since American Werewolf in London that I'm like, it's a new, this is like the next in that lineage of uh, werewolf movies. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the wolf man as the next one. But nobody, <laughs> nobody's going to agree. With He'll never give that. it up. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I thought that uh, Ginger Snaps was a, a classic of the 2000s. I think it's one of the best werewolf movies ever made. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, it made a, a, a star out of, well, I guess Chris Lemchi, but you know, <laughs> yeah. it, should, you know it, it boosted Catherine Isabel into the spotlight. Uh, Emily Perkins. I don't know that she's done a lot of stuff since I, I don't know what happened to her. Um, or the, the, the writer, obviously, I'm not mm-hmm. sure how, where she went orphan black. She went to orphan right. black with they the both director. Did, so yeah. they're all doing okay. So they're everybody got yeah. a career off of this mm-hmm. movie. Uh, congratulations. Um, yeah, I mean, I think absolutely have to see it if you're 
a werewolf uh, uh, film connoisseur or a horror fan or just a fan of good movies, I think Ginger Snaps fits the bill. I would say definitely recommended. Holly, what do you think? Colin throws a curveball. I think, wow, this, I think hey. this might be the first time. Gonna default, go to right, you know, but I think no, it's no, no. the first time you haven't defaulted gone to the person next to you. <laughs> right, right. So learning. I was surprised. I and know. I think you knew it too because you're like, am I going to pick a different person? <laughs> what a twist. All right. Um, I'm still not confident if this was my first time watching it or not. <laughs> I, I still don't know. I feel like I may have seen it at some point, but I'm not entirely sure. Canadian um, content just flows I right know. through, right by us. You there know? was so much of this that I was like, I've seen this scene. Like, this is familiar. I know this part, but mm-hmm. I'm not. I think positive. Ginger Snaps is one of those movies where you yeah. just like, I've always, I've always seen those two together. I, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it feels familiar to everybody. Maybe. It's like movie osmosis. Like, yeah. Yeah. we've absorbed it somehow. So I couldn't tell you if this was my first time or not. I don't know. Um, yeah, like we were saying, there's a lot of this that it just the, the, I have a lot of problems with the dialogue. The the angst for the first bit of this movie is almost too much. It's a lot. It's so good. It's so in that it makes me much. makes my in that it makes my heart hurt <laughs> a little bit. It, it, I have like flashback cringe. You know, yeah. I was like, "Fuck, did that was I ever like that?" Yeah. It's like, like that's right. what I was thinking watching Ugh. it. It's like almost hard to watch. Yeah. There's so much angst and cringe in the in the beginning of this, but then like obviously Short as over long sleeve shirts. as the as the characters develop and the story develops, like it does get better and it makes more sense. Um, so there is a nice flow there. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I enjoyed this movie. It's the parallels are are just so spot on. It, I can't believe no one's ever done the the teenage girl werewolf before. It just it makes so much sense. Um, yeah, I, I I enjoyed it. It's I didn't I I wasn't sure if I liked that there wasn't a werewolf throughout the whole thing that it's a gradual, but I think I do like it. Um, I I really do think it just comes down to the end werewolf design that I don't like. Um, I think it's almost a bit of a letdown that we finally get there and it's more of a rubber monster. Um, don't love that. But, you know, that's probably my biggest complaint is the... It keeps it away from greatness. Yeah, so yeah. Because I do really enjoy this movie. It's, it's a gr- it's a good movie. It's um, it's sad. You, you really feel it. Um, which I don't always feel that way with a werewolf movie. You know, a lot of them, it's just standard monster movie and you know you move on but this one's like at the end you're like man that was like a bummer <laughs> the werewolf yeah. angst movie yeah it is a yeah. bummer but in a good way yeah so i do like this movie it's not it doesn't reach that level of greatness like you said colin but it's it's still pretty good um yeah i definitely recommend it i think it's up there with with a probably top it's definitely top 10 werewolf movies it might be top five it's pretty awesome so yeah i recommend it john what did you think um I'll go as far as to say this is a very good movie. Um, I think we've established over the werewolf movies we've brought here. They're not my eh, they're not my favorite thing. If you find me a good one, I like it. Um, especially one with a good werewolf, which is I, I like we said the biggest problem with this one. I don't think the werewolf is kind of like I said keeps it from being great. The werewolf is not good enough for the rest of the movie. I think um, the rest of the movie is like we said the themes. It all fits together and and. And it goes very well, um, but it's it's a little. I mean, it's a little slow in the middle. I mean, it's got it, the movie's got its problems, but it is still entertaining. Um, I was surprised not missing the werewolf from this movie. Um, I do like the relationship between these two. Uh, it's very intense. Uh, this movie started off very intense. I forgot about the whole suicide and death things and all that stuff, and it feels very. Uh, feels very 90s and 2000s because of all this stuff. I mean, uh, 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 Bridget's wearing a trench coat through most of this movie and stuff like that. Um, it is... This is an oozy movie. This is a 90s oozy movie, but I like that. <laughs> um, aside from the cringe, which makes me feel bad, um, uh, this is a good movie. It's, uh, it's a good little um, flashback to that era. Um, it is one of the better werewolf movies, and I, like we said, the themes line up kind of perfectly for this um so yeah i think it's ginger snaps you've heard of it and you think you've seen it and if you haven't you should watch it so i'm gonna recommend <laughs> ginger snaps michaela take some yeah is it it's interesting to watch the first draft of jennifer's body right that's like what this is you know <laughs> right like, yeah <laughs> um 
you know, I mean, I love werewolf movies. I'm partial to them. I think I agree with your comments about like the end of werewolf results, like rubber suit, just not being great. It does look a lot like the cat people in mm-hmm. Sleepwalkers, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. yeah, it does. Like the the texture oh, yeah. and the oiliness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to forget what those looked like because we had to watch them have sex with each other. So um, Glowing sex. Yeah, in a mirror. Yeah. It was, we were learning a lot of things at once because we were learning it was incest <laughs> yeah, and we cat people sex. It was a lot. Go listen to our sleepwalkers. <laughs> yeah, waves episode. of problems yeah. at that point. That yeah. movie's a lot. <laughs> uh, the thing I really like about this movie is a lot of werewolf movies are like mankind going out into the woods where we don't belong. And this is like the price we're paying for like invading this space. Right. But this one is like the wolves are coming into the city. We don't really know why, and we never really get an answer as to why this started or how it started, but, like, it's kind of like you're not safe in your suburbs is, like, an undercurrent of this movie, too, because we see all the houses look exactly the same, and Mm -hmm. the the daughters are obsessed with, like, not conforming, you know? That's their whole shtick, because they need to be independent and not conform, and so there's, like, this weird Stepford undercurrent to this werewolf movie that I think is interesting. Nina Rogers helps with that, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I would like to see a, like, Stepford werewolf movie, right? Like mm. perfect suburb, and then like a it's a cult. So, like there's a werewolf cult that runs this little Stepford perfect werewives. suburb. Yeah, like wolves. The werewives of Stepford. <laughs> Wasn't uh, um, what's his Momoa? Did you Jason. Oh, um, wolves. Was it? Oh yeah, he was in that movie. Yeah, it was like somebody had come back I to a town where that. they were from, and it's like they used to be like yeah. a werewolf. Or what? Well, we had also <laughs> what? It. what? No, I needed to describe. It was this like more. it was like a direct to Netflix movie. Oh, it was sure. not like a good thing, but it was. It wasn't like Braven, was it? <laughs> That's another movie he did. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just like you're just saying words. He's just well, in a lot of shit. Yeah. yeah. He is. <laughs> God bless. We, <laughs> but we've also like talked about. I know on previous werewolf episodes we've talked about like. This is what we need to do, guys. This is how we get our Oscar, okay? We write, like, a serious, like, marriage drama, right? Mm -hmm. Where, like, one of the partners is, like, a a war veteran, right? And then, Mm -hmm. like, you don't find out to the third act that, like, while they were at war, they got turned into a werewolf. So, like, werewolf is, like, this synonym for PTSD, right? Mm -hmm. So, but you treat it like an Oscar bait movie. So you get, like, an Adam Driver and, like, an Amy Adams to be, like, this couple that, like, just can't get their shit together after Mm -hmm. her war veteran husband Mm -hmm. came home. And then the third act is because he's a werewolf. Like I would say, yeah, Adam like, Driver is yeah, a werewolf. Like, yeah, let's write I'm this down Oscar bait movie, right? Okay. I would like yeah. to as long see as, him yeah, yeah, he just yeah. he just has a part where he sings somewhere in the middle of it, yeah. and then it's all Oscar. Copyright, yeah. Sean. Yeah, we need a title now. <laughs> Adam Driver is a werewolf. Copyright twenty twenty one. Adam Saturday Driver show. Werewolf Project. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Let, we talked about we the the monster doesn't fully work at the end, but it is a little over long. I don't think it needs to linger on some of this stuff as much as it does, but mm. um, it is like the werewolf answer to the craft and i think that like i would like to see more of this weird um female teen angst crossover with like horror monster subgenre you mm-hmm. know and it, if they made this movie now god how awesome would that be if they were mm-hmm. could you imagine a movie like this coming out now like i can't because yeah. i feel like they don't make teen content like this no, so, they're afraid of it. I yeah, think, yeah. Because this is a very hard R. Yeah. Like, yeah, teens yeah, yeah. have to be like happy and upbeat now because, like, it seems movies are like you're supposed to model yourself on this behavior. Where this, you know, yeah, you're not. It's right. Just, oh yeah, this story. Scared, this right. movie scared the shit out of some executive, yeah, right. especially the way oh, it yeah. opens, where she's just walking right. with the gas can and the rope and the chainsaw oh, yeah. and all that stuff, and then all the yeah. stuff that. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Scare the shits out of. Um. It, yeah. So definitely, uh, you know, revisit it, appreciate it, cherish it, definitely recommend it. Ginger snaps. There you go. That means that's uh, freak show approved. Indeed. Yes. And so that means, as the bylaws uh, state, you must watch it. There you go. Yeah, Boom. that's true. All right. You have seven days. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Until the next episode. Comes uh, out. Until the next yeah. episode comes out, then you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, the curse is lifted. What? What are we? <laughs> we don't doing? take this too seriously. <laughs> what are we doing for our next episode? We need like a, a theme song, like. <laughs> Freak show field trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd be remiss if we don't cover the biggest horror uh, event of the year. Yeah, I mean, I guess of we the already past did two, two years. You know, that was malignant, malignant too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the other one uh, is uh, the sequel to the highest grossing horror movie of all time, and then it's Halloween Kills. We're gonna go on a freak show field trip. We're gonna watch Halloween Kills. We're gonna tell you what we thought. Whether Halloween we Kills, like it or not. 
Because, damn it, we're going to cover every single fucking movie in this goddamn franchise before we're done. Yes. <laughs> okay, I don't... All right, just don't blame me for it, okay? This is not... This one's not my fault. We did come to a mutual agreement on this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. But Sean's very happy. <laughs> uh, I have to decide how to go into it. Am I going to be yelly, Sean, or am I going to be... It's okay. Go where the movie takes you, Sean. Yeah. All right, don't watch it. Bef- don't watch it on your own. Yeah, yeah, we got to get you fresh. Like, <sighs> you, we got to get you that night. All right, yeah. all right, all right, all right. Okay, it. all right. So uh, <laughs> that's next week's episode. You guys have already seen it already by the time this comes out. I'm bro. angry already. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>